he played more than 130 games at AFL level, including a grand final. Yet he is remembered best for his violent on-field behaviour, principally for removing several of Terry Wallace's teeth without appointment or anaesthetic. He was a favourite of the Melbourne faithful. He was the Melbourne player opposition supporters love to hate. Welcome, Rodney Grinter. Thanks, Mike. Is your reputation fair? Well, I guess if you have a look at the history, it probably is yes. Um, but, you know, I played 134 games, which I'm very proud of. Um, and you've got to be able to play the game to be able to play that many games. Correct, yeah. Now, your reputation's balls. We in the media always referred to you as the Melbourne hard man. Yep. Were you tough? Were you dirty? Or were you a combination of both? Um, I wouldn't say I was dirty. I was just hard at it. And, you know, if the ball was there to be won, I would go and do whatever I could to, to win it. And if someone got in my way, well, I just ran through them. I mean, just as to why you agreed, I was really pleased when you said that you would come on. But I was interested in the rationale. I sat with you and your wife, Bernadette, at Ron Barassi's 80th birthday celebration recently. Yep. And when your reputation came up, Bernadette, who seemed to be a very gentle, charming girl, clearly cringed when that discussion was on the agenda again. Yeah, well, I think every time anybody speaks to me about my footy, that gets brought up. And, and, and she doesn't like it because it brings out the, the bad side of me, I guess. Um, and she obviously would prefer to hear better things about what me. What a lovable than, husband you are. Yes, yeah. <laughs> father and husband, yes. Yeah. yeah, but you said at the same function you told me that you did have white line fever. Yeah, I did. There's no doubt about that. I'm certainly a mild person away from the footy field. Um, but when I played, I, yeah, I went out there and I could do whatever I needed to do to, to win a game of footy for Melbourne. Inside or outside the rules? Uh, well, you'd say with my uh, history and reports, outside. So, 10 reports, yep. 31 weeks suspended. That's a mm. season and a half. It's a waste. It's a waste. I was going to ask you how you look back on that and reflect on what might have been. Yeah, no, absolutely. I was disappointed that I'd missed so much footy. And, but I guess I'd lived on the edge when I played and you know, I had to obviously... Um, live up to those rules and regs at the time, so disappointing. Um, you say you lived on the edge. My memory of you is you were quite a stylish footballer. I mean, your hands were good, lovely kick. Uh, so you didn't need to be anything other than a natural footballer, did you? Well, I think if I, w if I didn't play the way that I played, and that was living on the edge, I don't think I would have played as many games as I did. Um, because that was certainly something that the intimidation factor um, helped me get games, I mm. believe. You, agree, you believe that, do you? Yeah. Yeah. Yet you'd come through, you'd played in Melbourne's under-19 Premiership team in, I think, 83. 83 yeah. 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 Uh, you'd come through with that. You were the best first-year in player in 1985. Five, yeah. So why the doubts about your ability just to play the game as everyone else did? Well, I think it goes back from when I was a kid. I played at hard and tough, and that was the way that I was brought up. Um, and I continued that through my whole, whole career. And, yeah, it certainly cost me uh, weeks. Um, but it was the way I played, and I, I don't think I could go out and play um, differently, even though I knew what I was sometimes was doing was wrong, but it was just the way that I played. It was the way I was made up. The disappointment, though, is that you played 10 years of football, including 11 finals with Melbourne, mm -hmm. and yet averaged only 13 games a season. Yeah. Well, I wasn't a regular. You know, there was a period yeah, of... Yes, you were. Well, there was a period of time, it's sort of between 87 and 89, that I, I would have played 17... 18 games, um, but then there was, a, like my first two years, I played 11 and 11. Mm -hmm. So I was in, out, in, out. So, um, and I had to work a lot harder than the other guys. My endurance levels weren't um, great. So I used to run around the Albert Park Lake before training, and I'd be in the gym doing all my weights before training and go out and train just to keep up um, with the level of fitness that I needed to play league footy. You know we're going to talk about the Wallace incident. I told you that before we started. Yep. Um, it's around 2 1988, you're playing at Witten Oval. Mm -hmm. Terry Wallace is the uh, Bulldog centre man. Um, pick up the story then, there's a marking contest, you're coming from behind. Yeah, so it came out of our forward line, um, down the wing. Uh, the ball was kicked long, so I've left my opponent um, to attack the footy and I had this bad habit of round arm tackles and round arm spoils. And um, this one obviously ended in a really bad situation where I copped Terry right across the mouth, um, and he was not, I don't think he was KO'd, but he was certainly, he wasn't in, uh, he wasn't that well. Mm. Um, and yeah, it was just one of those things. I, m I missed the ball by a whisker, and I've said this t every time I've been asked. Um, 
if you slow the slow the vision down I do miss the ball by a whisker however the video cameras or the the camera that was there that day there was one and it was on the wing so we didn't have different angles and all it really showed was me coming into the picture and a round arm or coat hanger the old coat hanger and copped him high well let's let's relive it mate and see if your version of it matches with the uh, with the reality how do you feel when you see that yeah it's not good it's really so you've missed by more than a whisker there right missed the ball yeah yeah, yeah. and it, yeah it's look it's it's vicious and it was reckless um, obviously high um, and I'm not proud of it, but it was one of those things you can't obviously take back. When you left your man to go to that contest, very difficult this one, to know what's it, because it's so instinctive this game. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember what was in your, in your mind? No, no, I didn't know that Terry was there. I didn't even see him. Well, my focus was on the footy. And like I said earlier, um, I did have this uh, habit of round arm tackles. I'd broken both thumbs for round arm tackles, hitting guys on the hip when I was trying to tackle them um, through my career. And this was another classic round arm action that wasn't really appropriate. Did Plough take the free kick? Do you remember? No, 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 he got carried off. Okay, so you're standing on the mark and you've got blood streaming from a yeah. very um, handsome wound in your left hand. Yeah, I didn't, um, didn't realise at the time. So when it had all happened, I'm standing on the mark with my hands on my hip. The runner come out, Robbie Sayers had come out and said, are you okay? I said, yeah, I'm, I'm fine, but I think Terry's in a bit of trouble. Mm. <laughs> and... Um, and he said, I think you better come off. And, I, and it was just the start of the game and I was really pumped and wanted to do well. And, and I said, no, I'm not going anywhere. And he said, I think you better come off, have a look at your hands. So because my hands were, were spread on my hips, I had a you know, whole 50 cent, size of a 50 cent yeah. piece in my hand. And um, yeah, so I had to go off and went in and got it stitched up in the, the old change room down at Witten Oval and um, ended up getting really badly infected. How many stitches? I think it was a dozen. A dozen, yeah. wow. So his teeth went sliced right through. When you saw him, the grinter that the opposition supporters saw, would have, most people would have thought, oh, well, he's done that. There's probably a degree of malice in it and, and intent. When you were standing over him and realised what, what had happened, how did you feel? I didn't really feel anything. It was just because it was the start of the game and I was pumped and um, there wasn't really a feeling. I just was wanting to get on with the game. Uh, not one... Footscray player remonstrated with me. There was no reports. No reports. There was an umpire 20 metres, and there was another umpire that was on the boundary line who was an emergency umpire who could have laid a report. They could have both laid a report, but um, because of the way that the play happened, um, it was in play. Yes, it was high and it was reckless, um, but there was no malice as far as intentional um, of doing that. What would you get today if you did that? Whew. Um, I don't think I'd probably get much more than I got then. I got six. six. I got six. So they started an inquiry, no report from the game, and then there was an inquiry because of the outcry. Yeah, well, they the kept publicity. playing it. They kept yeah. playing it on the yeah. telly, and because it was such a bad angle, mm. um, the, um, the AFL um, had to take some action, and I got uh, trial by video, booked on trial by video. You spend that night uh, with teammate Todd Viney. Yep. You wake up next morning with your hand the size of a football and throbbing and infected. Mm. When the realisation set in about what had happened to you and, and because of what had happened to Terry Wallace, yep. what, was, what, were you, what was your thought process then? Well, um, I went to the doctor um, because I was, had cold sweats, hand was throbbing, and I wanted to contact Terry. Um, so I contacted David Flintoff, and David Flintoff played with Terry at um, Hawthorne. Hawthorne. Um, so he had his number, so I rang Terry and um, asked how he was and I apologised for what had happened and he was quite good over the phone. He said, no worries, you know, thanks for ringing. Um, and then I was admitted to the hospital in Windsor and I stayed there. You spent a week in hospital? A week there yeah. with an infected Did hand. Plough play the next week? Yeah, he did. He did and you yeah, didn't? He got, he got three votes. <laughs> he did even. Plough, yeah. yeah. So in your phone conversation with him, was it lengthy or was it just uh, oh, functional? No, it was just a, yeah, I just wanted to touch base with him and yeah. let him know that I'm... You said you were sorry? Sorry for what had happened. And his response was, thanks for ringing. Um, what happens on the footy field stays on the footy field. Was it two years later that um, Plough sued you in Melbourne? I'm not sure the length of time from it, but yeah, that's right. Who won? We settled. <laughs> you had to pay? Footy club were fantastic. Yeah. Do you know, can you prepare to tell me how much they paid? No. Tens of thousands? Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Were you angry? Were you angry that, that if Plough says to you what happens on the footy field stays on the field, yep. 
and you accept that. Were you angry then that there was subsequent legal action? Definitely. You were? Yeah. You thought he should have abrogated his rights to, yeah. to and sue? It was, it was one of those things that, that happened on a footy field and it was unfortunate. Mm. Um, but then to take the action that was taken was yeah, very disappointing. Mm. You know, when, 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 and you, on your own admission, when people talk to you about your footy career, it always goes back to the Wallace incident. Mm. Do you resent that? Even though you caused that, do you, mm. do you think that there's the fact that you're, you're a, a very competent AFL player who played in a, in a grand final, do you resent the fact that that's sort of almost secondary? Well, I can't, I can't take it away. It happened. It was there. It was very highly publicised at the time, so it is something that people do remember um, because it was played a lot, it was in the paper, there was a lot of stuff that followed that, so there was a tribunal hearing um, and then there was the, um, the civil case that, that happened after that, so it was people of my vintage that go mm. to the footy remember that, um, mm. so they always ask about it. Is it disappointment or do you feel, is there any element of shame about the way lots of things transpired in your footy career? No, I'm not shameful for it. No. Um, I'm very proud of playing 10 years or 13 years at the Melbourne Footy Club. Uh, from a kid that came from the country, uh, all I wanted to do when I was growing up was play senior footy at Katandra. Yep. Uh, so to get the opportunity to come down and play for the Melbourne Footy Club and um, last as long as I did, I was very proud of that. Now, there was things that happened throughout that 13 years that I'm not proud of, however, um, that was the way it was, and I can't rewind the clock to take them back. Mm. You were well, a wild kid at Katandra West. Some uh, of your mates who I know right. said that you came and you're pretty wild when you when you landed in Melbourne. Yeah, I, yeah, I would agree with that. What in what sense? Law breaking or just sort of? Uh, I was just a bit of a lad. Bit yeah, of a lad. Didn't, didn't mind a drink and had a good time. How do you feel when I say to you that no Melbourne player has been reported or suspended for more games than you? Mm. How does that sit with you? Well, I don't know, to be honest. It's um, not something you can be proud of having Well, I sometimes, I, 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 sorry to interrupt, but sometimes I get the impression you quite like your reputation as Rodney Grinter, hard man. I'd rather be that than the other way. The other way being careful. Soft, being yeah. soft. Yeah. Yeah. I like footballers that are hard and tough and play the game that way. You're now Director of Coaching at St Kevin's That's in the right. APS system. Yes. You've been there for the best part of 20 years? 17 years. 17 years, yeah. Yep. When a young Grinter type comes across your radar, what do you say to him? I tell him to continue to play the way that he plays, um, to attack the ball with aggression, and if the man's got the ball, we'll attack him with aggression. I don't think you can play our game if you don't have that in your makeup because it is a tough, hard, physical game. But there are um, restrictions, aren't there? Of course. Yeah. Of course, yeah. No, we don't want to attack the man high or, you know, certainly the things that um, got me into trouble. Mm. I don't advocate that at all. Um, but I want players, boys, you know, the young boys at, the, at school footy to play tough and hard footy. Given the, the thing that you, it's um, the way you played your footy, you would know that players in the other team would take an opportunity to square up, live by the sword, die by the sword. Do you remember those occasions when you thought, this is, I'm not sure where I am here, but there's probably someone coming for me? Um, not really, no? to be honest. No, I never, I never felt threatened on a footy field. I never was worried. Um, didn't matter who we were playing. Even when I finished playing league footy and went down to Tasmania, there was a lot of people saying to me, be careful. You know, there'll be people out there that want to get You were captain scalp. coach of New Norfolk? New Norfolk, yep. down in Tassie, yep. Um, and not once did that happen in my post- AFL footy career, did I have anybody wanting to snipe me or look to snipe me? Mm, okay. 1988 grand final. Bittersweet memories for you. Mm. The Demons get smashed by, I think, a then record score. Yeah, it was. But you played in the grand final. Yeah. Tell us about those Yeah, memories. look, it was, um, again, one of those things that we all play footy for to play in um, a grand final and a premiership if you're lucky enough. Um, for Melbourne in 87, we made the finals for the first time in, I'm not sure whether it was 64, but it was a long, long time. It was, yeah. 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 Um, so to be a part of that um, that era at the footy club was very exciting and to um, rock up on grand final day. The thing that, the thing that I probably uh, am a little bit disappointed about, I didn't realise what the occasion was, like I certainly do now, like I go What, what do you mean? You didn't think it was as big as it yeah, was? Yeah, yeah. It was just one of those things that, and I, I guess when players are playing footy and those, uh, you know, you're playing finals and you're evolving as a club and doing quite well, it's just what happens. Um, so it wasn't, and I was 23, I think, 22 or 23, mm -hmm. so it was 
just something, oh, well, you know, this is what happens. We're fortunate really? enough. Yeah. You were in Melbourne's best and, that day, which probably wasn't a major achievement because mm, of the way it transpired. Yeah. Well, we had a lot of ball down the back, down the back yeah, half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was. Now, you mentioned 87 in passing. Little known fact that I discovered, I know you know it, but that mm -hmm. I discovered doing my research on you, you actually conceded the free kick that led to Bucky, Gary Bacanara, having the shot for goal yep. in the last minute, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. And then, <laughs> fortunately for you, Jimmy Steins runs across the mark, there's a 15 metre penalty, Bucky kicks the goal, you miss the uh, the grand final. Mm. What happened, what, was it a legitimate free? Did, had you done yeah, something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, um, I was playing forward that day, kicked a couple of goals, and then um, in the last quarter, um, Stephen Newport was playing on Bacanara, and um, the runner comes out, you're going back, we want you to pick up Bucky, and, and the, the game, because we were in control of the game for the whole, for three quarters, three and a half quarters. Because you had the win for three quarters. We did, <laughs> we did, it was, uh, everything was going our way. Um, and then we'd had many shots in that last quarter that, you know, if we had another one of them, we would have been victors and we would have been playing in a, in a grand final against Carlton. Um, so I get moved on to Bacanara, so I'm playing deep in, uh, in their forward line. The ball comes out from full back, so it was a Peter Swab kick straight down the middle, handle off to Tucky, I think, and mm -hmm. Tucky kicked to, Big bomb. Yep. Yep, yep. to Bucky leading. And I was I tripped over his feet and fell into his back. Okay. Did Jimmy did you know that the siren had sounded? No. Jimmy wouldn't have run across the mark if he hadn't known the siren was was bellowing because Dipper had run down the wing to try and get a shot closer to goal. Mm. So Jimmy just run straight between me and Bacanara to pick up Dipper and the umpires didn't hear the siren, we didn't hear the siren. Um, so he gets the 15 metre penalty. When that happened, when the ball's sailing through, you can see it, and the grand final suddenly pinched away from you, how'd you feel? Was oh, it devastating. How emotional is that when, when a grand final berth is within your grasp yeah. and, you, and you let it slip? Yeah, look, it was really disappointing because we had, like I said, we had many opportunities to you know, seal the game in that last quarter, but we just weren't able to. And uh, credit to them, they, um, they just kept clawing away and, and got us right at the death knock. John Swipper Northey was your coach. Yep. He loved his footballers playing hard footy, didn't yeah, he? Yes. Did he incite you uh, to play the way you played, or was that natural? No, he never, never said anything no. about doing anything untoward. Um, that was just the way that I played. So um, there was one, there was one game against um, uh, Footscray where we um, a young uh, Leon Cameron was playing yeah. on the wing and was toweling us up, was very young. I was playing a half-back flank and the runner come out and just said, you're playing on him. Didn't have to say anything more. Um, <laughs> said you so whacking? I just, no, I didn't. No. I just put the fear of life into him. <laughs> How do you do that without whacking them? Just verbal? Verbal, yeah. 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 And he fell for that, did he? He did. He was only young. He was only a young fella. Yeah. Good and player, Leon, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was. Very good. A friend of mine was involved with a kid called Ash Walker. Played seconds. You were playing seconds at Melbourne. Melbourne, yeah. You were captain of Melbourne seconds. Yep. Playing Fitzroy. Yep. Um, this kid, you was in a collision with you. you, you ran into him? Yep. I think with your hip? Yes, correct. Yeah, okay. He never played again? No, no. It was a really, it was one of those ones where he had his head over the footy and I'd come running in from the side and collected him right on the top of his head with my hip. Mm -hmm. um, not sure whether it knocked him out at the time, but certainly did some um, inner balance damage to his, um, yeah, his balance. Yeah. And I don't think he played again. So when someone like me is trawling through your career and focusing on those negatives, do you get irritated? Uh, well, yeah, you do because, um, but it is, like I said before, it's one of those things that you can't um, shy away from. It's mm. happened. Um, so people are entitled to talk about it and ask questions. Okay. Um, so I have no problems with that. However, it is a little bit frustrating at times, and this is where my Bernadette was coming from, that that's all people focus on. Yeah. They don't focus on, you know, I played 13 years for the Melbourne yeah. Footy Club, played over 100 games. Um, which I'm very proud of. Was the high point the grand final? Yeah, yeah, would have, absolutely. That's the ultimate that we, um, you know, we played in you know, night games back then. We, we won the 87 uh, night premiership, we won the 89 night premiership. We played in the grand final, day grand final in 88. So it was Amazing exciting. for young Melbourne supporters to think that under Swipper Northey, you finished top four five times in a row, I think, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Five a, top four finishes in a row. Mm. And we, we had always had a bit of a lull in the middle of the season where we'd lose four or five in a row and then we'd have to do everything we possibly could to just like in 87 to make the finals when you know if we had have won those games that in the middle of the year 
but we were able to do that. And, we, and then when we got there, we played reasonably well. Rod, the Melbourne Footy Club have been floundering for a long time. The under-19 Premiership team group comes through. Grinter, Greg Healy, Graham Yates. Um, Newport. Stephen Newport. Yeah. Seemed to lift the standards at Melbourne. Seemed as if the, sort of the horizons just broadened because you blokes were saying we can get to this level if we work harder. Yeah, certainly there was a group, that, a core group that came together, uh, came through together, and were able to um, gel as a unit. And we did whatever we could for one another and looked after one another, and that showed when we played. Your mates remember these things. You were always first at training. You were zealous on the training track, did all the right things, and actually you introduced the extra sessions on your notional day off. Yeah, look, it was, um, like I said earlier, uh, my endurance wasn't a strong point of mine, and one of the things that I'd always done was train hard and play hard, and you, you'll get the best out of yourself. Your, your coaches were Ron Brassy for one year? Yes. And then Swooper? Swooper. Uh, and then Neil Barham. Neil Barham for the last All two. different individuals, aren't they? Very. Yeah. Very. Well, you talk about Brass being that um, legend of the... Of, um, was he that much of a legend that you were scared to talk to him? Yeah, you were intimidated by him, absolutely. So you have him, and then we get John Northey, who's a real motivator, um, us against them. Um, you know, everybody in the AFL hates Melbourne, wants Melbourne to <laughs> you know, not survive. Is that what Sweeper would say? Yeah, all yeah. the time. And he'd yeah. cut out articles in the paper and put them up on the walls and... We'd all be running out with um, you know, fire out of our yeah. ears and wanted to just do whatever we could to win. And then we get big Neil Baum who comes in with a reputation of a tough, big Richmond player, and he's big. Mm. So intimidation-wise, the size of the man, and it's probably a little bit similar to me in terms of you, know, you play hard, but then off the field you're a different, mm. different person, and Neil was certainly that. Um, but gave me another opportunity. I was getting close to the end of my career and ended up playing me forward and ended up playing... You know, another sort of 20 odd games, 25 games under Neil. Because you, you looked like you were gone at one point. Yeah, certainly in 92. Yep. 92, I reckon I played um, oh, one or two games. Um, but then when Barmy came, he threw me forward and was able to kick a few goals and pick up another 20 did you, odd games. Did you get delisted at one point? At the end of my career, I got um, I found out by watching the TV when they <laughs> uh, they bring up the you know the delistings and the yep. people coming into a footy you club. You say I know that bloke. That's I said, me. Ah, Grinter delisted. <laughs> What's going on? Well, and you so didn't know. No one had know. told you. No one had told me. So I think there was a breakdown in communication because I rang <laughs> Richard Griffiths and he was our footy manager at the time and he said, "Didn't Neil talk to you?" Wow. And and then they went on then to ask me to stay around and be captain of the seconds in. Um, in Were you offended by that? I was disappointed, yeah. Mm. Yeah, like anybody would. Mm. You know, you've given your heart and soul to the footy club and nobody tells you that you're not going to be able to play league footy again. Mm. So you come back to Melbourne when Neil Danaher takes over as coach and you're uh, the coach's runner. Mm. First year 2000? That's correct, yeah. Grand final year? Yeah. I wonder what would have happened, Rod, had you been out on the ground when Dean Wallace snotted Brad Green <laughs> early in the game. Would I, you have been able to control yourself? I would have, yeah, absolutely. I was... 35, 36, so I'd grown up a bit. As a runner, that's not what you do. So yeah. you could certainly verbalise, you could get into them verbally, but... Did you do that? Yeah, I, I did that, yeah. Mm. yeah. Who copped your best sledge, do you remember? Is there one that stands out? Oh, uh, Croft got... Croft didn't like what I said to him when Simon Godfrey was tagging him and doing yeah. a good job on him. Yeah. And he actually ran into me. Did he really? Mm. You've got to say something clever yeah. to get under the skin of a bloke who's played 300 oh, games. I would have been swearing at him, calling him a Is that all? so-and-so, and yeah, and he... Croft fell for that? Cro yeah, he did. And we're having a shot for goal, and I'm standing outside the 50, and I've looked over, and he's running at me, and I'm thinking, he's going to run into me. <laughs> and he did? And he did. Did he? Yeah, and I asked him if he's taken some tough pills today, and, <laughs> <laughs> and got away from it. Yeah, that together. gets under this. <laughs> I'll revert um, back to the bad Rodney Grinter for one more occasion. Haven't we been in been that park enough? <laughs> we have. I forgot one. 1990, a game against Richmond. Oh, yes. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Yep. You ended up missing nine weeks of football because of incidents that day and a carryover suspension of three weeks. Mm. What happened? They, um, I think the AFL at the time, or the tribunal at the time, didn't want me playing because every time I uh, went up, I got five, four or five for the most minor things. Um, and most they had, minor? You mean most minor? Yeah, some of them were really just trivial. Were they? Yeah. But I would get four or five every time I went up because they had a reputation. and So I think that that was uh, an agenda. Um, but Are you saying that the AFL 
I'm not saying the AFL did, but I felt that there was certainly an the agenda. tribunal wanted you out of the game. Neil Busy was the uh, chairman of the tribunal. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Uh, through all, and I remember him looking down, putting his glasses down, and mm -hmm. oh, you're here again. Did he say that? Uh, mm. The Richmond game, uh, I had a three-week suspended sentence. Hanging, hanging over, over your head, head, yeah. Yep. And it was just before quarter time. I jumped in the front of Jeff Hogg, who'd let out from full forward, and he clocked me in the back of the head. And um, so I was spread eagle. The siren had sounded. So the players were all walking back to their huddle, and um, big Mark Lee was trundling past and called me a weak so-and-so, get up, and I just saw red and ran in and just punched him in the stomach, which was mm -hmm. really just stupid because um, cameras were on me. Um, so I ended up getting three weeks for that, for that for punch in the stomach, plus the three weeks yeah. spent. So, so it's six. six. Yep. And then later in the game, Graham Yates had been knocked over, and I'm helping him up with the ground. And Andy Goodwin came running in really quickly, just to stand the mark. And I saw him coming, and as he got to me, I just gave him a little left jab, and it was nothing. And he went down like I'd stabbed him. <laughs> and so I got reported for that. And I got a three three weeks plus a three weeks suspended for that. Are you proud of where you've ended up? You know, you've given this traumatic start to your adult life, where you are now. I mean, you, you've, your reputation so much healthier now, more positive, isn't it? Yeah, well, I think you, you, you grow up, you get older, you're a bit more mature. And, um, you know, I've got a, a family that I needed to support. So I needed to head down, bum up and make sure that um, um, I looked after them. Um, so I've been working like I've always worked mm. since I've come down to Melbourne, never, never not worked, never had anything professionally as far as footy goes. So, um, and I've worked really hard and I enjoy um, catching up with past players and you know, involved obviously uh, chairman of the Melbourne Footy Club past players and currently chairman of the VFL Club, which is a, a foundation that raises money for charity and we hold two or three events a year. This is literally one of those colourful careers and I, and I do, I genuinely mean this, I think you did some things that probably you wouldn't do your time over again, yep. but I, I think it's important that people remember that you're a pretty good player. You're a permanent player in a very good team in that era in the, in the late 80s yep. uh, and I admire your courage in actually allowing someone like me <laughs> to bring up or, you know, reopen these old sores and uh, it's, it's good to catch up. No worries, thanks Mike. Thanks Rod. Good on you.